Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Jackson's on my lap so if you see any movement that's that's who it is. So I recently rebuilt my fire belly tone polydarium. I didn't even share the previous one like I just kept working on it and working on it while it was like active and running and I was like I don't like it so I never even shared it. I was gonna share it months ago and just nope didn't happen. So I actually built a fire belly tone polydarium from like start to finish and I recorded all of it. You all have been asking me to show off my building skills, which <laughs> skills, okay, for like a long time. But you all have been asking like, Jessica, you keep building enclosures. Can you like show us how you did it? And so finally I have. Now there's a couple things I wanna say before it gets started. One, I'm not Serpent Design. Please don't come for me if you think it looks like crap in comparison to another YouTubers, okay? Like this is what I am capable of. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but these are my skills, okay? I'm still learning. I've only been building enclosures for a couple years, you know, so be patient with me. <gasps> oh no, the neighbor's getting her mail. Oh no, the neighbor's getting her mail. <laughs> Please don't compare me to other YouTubers. It hurts my feelings. I already compare myself to YouTubers otherwise. And uh, yeah, I just don't need that energy in my life. I'm going to quickly show what their previous one looked like. It was messy, it looked bad. And then I'm also going to include a list of all the things you'll need and then we'll get right into building. I will include a list of timestamps down below for you to jump around the video. You know, if you just want to see how I built the background, if you want to see what plants I got, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, with all that said, let's go ahead. Also, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and enjoy. This, this right here coming down today and a new one will be taking its place in a few weeks so i've included three lists one of things that you'll need to build the enclosure one of things that you'll need to decorate the enclosure and one list of things that you will need like as equipment like filters and lighting it's up to you what you want to use everyone's build is going to be a bit different because everyone wants to use different types of materials but i made all three of these lists so you can know every single thing that i used even if it was just momentarily in this build you can pause the video and look at each list, but I will also include links down below to places you can find them. So I started out with my 36 by 18 by 18 Exoterra. You can use any kind of tank, really. This is just what I prefer. And then I got pieces of acrylic, which were ones that I already had, but you can buy some at Lowe's and have them cut to the size that you need. And then I arranged what I wanted my land and water section to look like. Now you can go straight across. You can just do a corner. It's all up to you. I chose to do this little like asymmetrical triangle thing just because I wanted it to like look a bit cooler than just doing straight across. And then secure the piece that you have in place with tape, whether that be in a meeting point or on the bottom, but leave some space available. That way you can put the silicone on at certain points and so it'll hold in place when you take the tape off. So I first started with my outer corners and then I did my middle and then I did the front and back of the bottom. I know my silicone work is ugly, but it does the trick, so don't judge me. Now I'm testing to see if it will hold water. So this is the land section over here. This is the water in the front. After a few hours, there was no leaks. So it was okay for me to go ahead and start the background. I took these two pieces of cocoa fiber mat and siliconed them onto the sides. Then I laid the enclosure on its back and I started to lay out how I wanted the cork of the background to be. I found that the cork, the way it laid out, created a nice like pot like for a plant see how this one's arched so i decided to go ahead and utilize that in, and set them up in a way that would allow me to plant in the background whilst i was filming uh, my phone died so i did all this background like the spray foam um, without it being on camera but you will see it here in a second because there was some spots that i wanted to touch up so this is great stuff gaps and cracks expanding foam and it's in the color black it doesn't matter if you get black or the white just like with silicone it doesn't matter if you use black or white but as you can see this is what it looks like when you spray the foam out it is not something that you want to touch with your hands I recommend wearing gloves for this. I didn't wear gloves just because like I've worked with this enough times. I know I'm not going to put my hands anywhere near it. Um, and I was filming with my phone from above. So it wasn't like I was on my hands on my phone or anything. But I, I felt confident using gloves. I do recommend using gloves though. Um, anytime you work with silicone 
or with expanding foam. So as you can see, I'm just filling up the spots where I want the foam to meet the wood. That way, when I carve it later and cover it in silicone and eco earth, it's like a nice finish instead of just like a random gap in between. So you wanna put the foam where you want the background to be, and you wanna not put foam where you want there to be like a plant or something. So like, as you can see, I didn't spray inside of the planter because I want to put a plant inside of it. Behind the planters, I also put a little bit of of that cocoa fiber mat down just so that uh, there wasn't like clear glass behind it but yeah this is what it looks like when the foam is completely dry it's very puffy you know it expands quite a bit and if you decide that you you know don't like the shape of it you can always put more foam on so it's a nice like method of building a background it's not the best out there but it's a it's a decent method of building a background so here I am carving the foam I'm using a razor blade. I can't recommend that because it's not like the safe option, but I do like using a razor blade. You can also use a knife. I've seen people use like the little serrated blades that come with like pumpkin carving kits. Like you can use that just fine. Um, but as long as you achieve this right here on the screen, a carved out background, you're good to go. So as you can see, there's a bunch of scraps back there. There's a whole bowl of scraps right here but this is what it looks like finished for the most part. I'll have to take a look at it from other angles to see if I missed any spots, but what you want to achieve is a surface that has been completely carved because the silicone is not going to stick to these uh, like non-porous bits. It'll stick better to this like porousy part, you know? So. That's what it looks like the day after I carved it. As soon as you carve it, you can start with the silicone method that you'll see here in a second, but I just ran out of time. And so, yeah, time to start siliconing, which is the stinky part. So make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area, such as, you know, your garage or your backyard. So for building the background, covering it to make it look like earth, you want eco-worth and you want it to be dry. And then you also want, um, cocoa chip so you don't have to use cocoa chip if you just want to use eco earth that's fine but this will add more texture to it so you need both of these and then you also need silicone and a caulk gun and gloves so what you want to do is start in sections so for example i'll work on this section right here so i'll cover it with silicone right so we'll just squeeze a bunch out like that and then you'll take a paintbrush so for some people don't use a paintbrush, some people will use their hands, some people will use like their hands covered in gloves. Um, but I prefer to use a paintbrush because I don't like the way that it makes the gloves all messy. So I just buy a cheap paintbrush, cheap paintbrush, right? And then you just start lathering it up. And for, you know, like cleanliness purposes you're gonna want to have gloves on and i know i'm not wearing gloves right now but it's just to do the little demonstration um when the real work comes in i'll have gloves on you need the gloves because when you push the eco earth and the cocoa chip into the silicone um you obviously don't want to get it all over your hands but some people will literally just like i said put gloves on and then smear all this with their hand so you as you can see this brush allows you to get like right on in there with the silicone and you really don't want to miss any spots. So there, the silicone is on, right? Now, before I apply the Eco Earth, I'm gonna do right here and right here. That way we have like a nice finished off area, nice and clean. And like I said, you really want to get it in all of the little nooks and crannies because if you don't, then the silicone is only going to stick or the eco earth is only going to stick to the silicone where the silicone is. So if you're missing any spots, then it's going to, you know, make an uneven background. So take your time with it. This part is the most annoying part because it takes a decent amount of time. Okay, so background is covered and because silicone cures relatively fast this is why you want to do it in sections you put on your glove and then you sprinkle it on so like that and you pat it into place so you spread it over and you're gonna have excess eco earth so 
try not to use something that's like really expensive. I mean, if you want, you can, but try not to use something that's really expensive because you will have like a bunch that falls off. So just, just be aware that some of it is gonna go to waste. You wanna press it into like every bit. That way you can get a nice strong bond and nice coverage. So here's what it looks like with just the background covered. Now there's a bunch of extra EcoWorth here that once this is dry, I'll vacuum up and show you guys. Still have not done either of these sides yet, but um, I'm gonna have to wait until I can put this on its side to do that. So I have the tank upright, it's the next day. And as you can see, I mean, it's just brushing right off. Um, I uh, can see like spots that I missed that I'll have to go touch up. Um, but yeah, it just brushes right off. And this is all from me just setting the enclosure upright. When I vacuum, a lot more will come off, but I'm gonna wait to vacuum until I do these side pieces. That way I can pick up what's fallen off and use it on the side so I don't waste as much. But yeah, this is what it looks like the next day. Da -da -na -na, a background. The reason I'm not finishing it now is because I'm really bad at remembering how much silicone I'm going to use. <laughs> this is a tale as old as time for me, okay? Every single time I build an enclosure, I think I'll use this much silicone and I always run out. Always. It is very frustrating. So now I'm waiting for silicone to arrive. Amazon Prime, two day shipping. You think I'd learn? I haven't. <laughs> So this is an unfinished side. There's a little bit of EcoWorth on it because I just did this side and that is what it looks like. So the background is almost complete. So now we'll do this. So see, you just put a bunch of silicone on this and then you flatten it out. Now on the other one, you have to work in sections because there's like a lot of grooves and stuff to get into. Here, it's literally just painting in a straight line pretty much. Like you just are painting right over it. Now this obviously is not as textured as like this type of background because that's carved foam. However, I think it still looks pretty nice and just because these are side panels, I don't care about them looking as nice as the background. Some people don't even do sides, they just do the back, but I personally like the look of the like sides being the same texture and color because I think it looks more complete. And then when you do side panels like this, you have to make sure that you like put a bead of silicone along the bottom and then press EcoWorth or whatever you're using into it. So it has like a nice finished bottom instead of just being exposed on the bottom. So I'm gonna get to this because boy oh boy, this is not a fun smell. It's a little bit dark, so uh, it will not be this dark when it's set up, just keep that in mind. But I'm testing it again to see if it holds water just for my own sanity because I really don't want to end up in a situation where it leaks after I've set it up. Oh my God, it, you don't want that to happen. So test it multiple times. This is as high as the water will go. So as you can see, it's like, you know, can't go above this black part yet because this is ventilation water will come through here. There is a bit of a gap here. I knew there'd be a gap, right? I mean, ideally you'd have a gap. That way water won't spill over into your land section, um, but it is quite a gap. And that's because when I was measuring, I measured this top lip and it's, I should have measured like, you know, like right around here. So there'd be less of a gap. However, rolling with the punches here, you know what happens. It's just something to keep in mind if you are going to do this to um, perhaps make yours a little bit shorter than I made mine, um, but just not too short because you don't want water to splash over into this. Oh, and I figure people might be curious about this. I measured how many gallons of water fit in this section. Now that's not without substrate and decor. So, you know, you're, you're liable to lose a gallon or maybe less than that. But anyways, just this amount of water in here right now is 14.7 gallons. I like poured each, you know, bit in to measure how much. Uh, of course I did that in liters, so then I had to convert it, which is why it's 14.7. Um, but yeah, it's 14.7, almost 15 gallons. Okay, so this held water that I took some out. Um, I didn't feel like taking all of it out because I'm being lazy but I started putting in the drainage layer. My drainage layer, like, that I've had stored up for a while, I accidentally dumped substrate in it a long time ago. So there's like tiny bits of substrate in here that I sifted out for the most part. Um, but when you order hydrogen, 
like from a store, like I got mine from Josh's Frogs, it'll just be clay balls. You won't see any like little bits of charcoal or whatever, but it's not a problem for it to be in there. So it's no big deal. But yeah, I have the entire bottom of the land section lined with a drainage layer, which is important in high humidity setups. And you can see it through here. So to like about an inch and a half or so. So I have the flash on so that you can see, um, but you just wanna cover the hydrogen or the clay balls with a layer of mesh. Now I forgot to wet my mesh. Ugh, that's like something I always forget to do. You're supposed to moisten it before you put it in here. I forgot and then I covered it in the foil. I'm sorry, not foil. I covered it in the mesh. So I uh, am currently wetting it through the mesh. Usually it's like really dusty. So that's why you want to wet it. Plus it creates a nice moisture at the bottom. Mine fortunately wasn't dusty because I had already like used it before and then put it back in storage, but I completely forgot to moisten it. So that's what I'm doing. So this is the substrate blend that I made myself that I'm using. It is a mixture of sphagnum moss, organic topsoil, sand, uh, eco earth, cocoa chip, and um, so I have some hydrogen, the clay balls that you just saw, spread throughout for a bit of drainage. Yeah, but this is what it looks like. And here's what it looks like moistened. It's a nice substrate, very happy with it. Hopefully it'll be enough and I don't have to make more, but knowing my luck, I'll have to make more. I turned the light on so that you could see, but I am a little bit short like I expected. And not only am I a little bit short in the land area, but I haven't filled these like little planters yet. It's okay, it happens. So I finished adding substrate. The light is on, well, one of the lights. Um, and I also crammed some sphagnum moss into parts of the background which normally I would silicone on, but I really got tired of using silicone and then I just kind of crammed it into like the nooks and crannies and it worked out really well. So I'm happy I didn't have to use more silicone. So the driftwood has come out, as you can see, it's steaming. Um, it's not hot to the touch, but it, the wood retains heat. So you have to let it cool down and dry all the way. But this is like one, two, three, four, five pieces that I have. I have another that's currently waiting to be boiled. Then I have this piece, which is currently in there. If you notice the water is yellow, that's just from the tannins, it's okay. This water is like darker because this piece has never been boiled before. I actually just bought it at the pet store. And the longer that this sits in here, the more like air comes out of it, as you can see, but also this water will become so dark. Now this wood doesn't fit, which means I'll just like flip it. So I flipped it over and now the like exposed part or part that was exposed earlier is soaking and as you can see the water is so brown so yeah that's just tannins it's okay just realized oh my voice is so dry from covid my voice i mean my throat anyways just uh realized i haven't updated you guys so I added substrate. The substrate is a blend of black fluorite gravel and sand. I think that's what it's called. I will include both of those below. I'll also include the Carib Sea Naturals sand and the Carib Sea River Stone, which is like these small little pebbles. Then I also have a few different brands of rocks in here, but really you can just get any kind of rocks that are like earth tones. So I just wanted to have different sizing plus. It's a good idea to have them built up around the filter. That way none of this like gets kicked up into here. Now it's pretty heavy. Like it won't really get kicked up too much because it's a lot of like small stone instead of really fine sand, but there is one fine sand in here. So just to make sure none of that really gets kicked up into here, um, I put some stones around it. But this is a filter. It's a little Fluval filter. I've never used it before. So we'll see how that goes. For Fire belly toads and yellow belly toads, you can use sponge filters, you can use hang on back filters, you can use any kind of filter you want. Internal ones, under gravel ones, I mean, as long as it's not putting out a strong current, you are good to go. So we'll see how this goes. I have it set on medium current right now. Um, there's like a little latch right here that opens up and then you can choose which one. It's a very small filter. It's meant for 15 gallons, which as I said, this is 14.7, but I'm also going to have air stones in here to provide aeration to the plants because there will be plants in here, which will also help to provide um, filtration, including pothos, which is really good for helping water quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and start decorating and then fill it and then get this filter running. This piece of wood right here, 
I am intending on covering the filter with. Oop, I just stabbed my background. But anyways, yeah, I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so I have it filled up a little bit more than it was, but it's not all the way full yet. I have the filter running, which I have conveniently hid underneath of this large piece of wood. And um, it also, like, the current comes straight out, so it hits this wood instead of hitting this background or instead of hitting, um, like, creating too much current for the frogs. So that's nice. Um, and it'll create even less when the water is actually as high as it's going to be. I still need to get a suction cup and hold this cord to the wall here because it's popping out through... Okay, I'll just show you this way. It's popping out through here, which then I will have to cover. I have the plants in. We've got philodendron wendimbi. These ones are particularly tall, so I put them in the corners. And then I have this little cute bush one, which is there. Then I have this big philodendron cordatum. And then I have creeping charlie, which is a pilea, I think. I always get pilea and peperomia confused. So I will just leave all the links to their names and where I got them from, which is Joster Frogs, down below. All of this driftwood in the water is Malaysian driftwood, which is my favorite for water setups because it doesn't really grow that like fuzzy growth fungusy growth looking stuff which is completely safe by the way so if your drift whatever grows it it's fine um but malaysian doesn't really grow it it's also very dark under the water it's just lovely it also puts a lot of tannins in the water which are really natural it's great it's like my favorite driftwood for water setups i also bought two syngonium and then i just let them choose which ones to send me they sent me this one which has like some red in it and i already have a syngonium house plant that's like this so i'm just going to combine them and then they also sent me this one which i love but when i like put it in here i didn't like i didn't get vibes from it you know like I don't know how to explain it. I put it in here and I just did not like the way it looked. I'm really weird about colors and everything having to like be of the same type of shade, which is really annoying. <laughs> I have a weird thing about colors and like textures being the same all throughout. So I had to go with, on this floor level, everything had to be pretty much the same. Like I had this down here and my brain was like, cancel, cancel, doesn't work, has texture, lighter green. <laughs> so I had to put it up there. <laughs> it's like, you know, just one of my quirks. <laughs> it is what it is. But like, as long as I'm happy with the enclosure and the animals are enriched, it doesn't really matter. Like you, one time I got some like rude critiquing about having bamboo in my enclosures cause it was too simple. And I'm like, why do you care? Like, honestly, why do you care? Like <laughs> I'm putting live plants in the enclosure. I'm decorating it how I want. Why do you care? But anyways. So I've added pothos and bamboo because it helps to filtrate the water. You know, live plants help water quality. I also have a couple little like anubias down here that were part of the uh, like old enclosure from even before, like probably two tank builds ago. Um, but they're the only ones I have and I'm gonna get more and put them in here after I get back from vacation because I am leaving for vacation uh, in a few days. The water has this golden yellow color because of tannins. Um, and that's just kind of how it goes when you use any kind of driftwood. Um, but yeah, everything else is done with the exception of this corner plant, which arrives tomorrow. Like I said, bamboo and pothos are in. This will look better once the pothos like turns up to the light. I literally just put them in so like these ones are going this way, but they will turn this way. These ones will be pointing more upwards. I have one over here and then I've just got like tons and tons of bamboo. Which, again, like I said, people might come for me for using bamboo, but I like it, so it's in here. This is my enclosure. I have used some of the filtration from their previous enclosure in order to help jumpstart it. I also used water from their previous enclosure to help jumpstart it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and add the frogs and also going to add the... Um, air stones because i have air stones that i had in the previous one i'm going to put in here to help aerate the water keep more water movement because as you can see it's pretty still um but just a little bit more movement and also having more air will help the plants grow so that's what i'm going to do now so the frogs are in see frogs are in The gray ones are um, Bombina variegata, and then the green ones are um, Bombina orientalis. And the reason I have them housed together is because this is like the best space for them all right now. But when I move, I'll be building another polydarium so that the fire bellies have their own and the yellow bellies have their own. 
also. I know it's pretty controversial to keep them together, but um, mine have not bred, and if they do, I'll be keeping all of the babies. Oh look. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, the reason it's controversial is because they don't, for the breeding world, you don't want to mix them and then have those breed and think that, like, you know, they'll, they'll mess up the other lines and stuff. Right now, these two are engaging in Amplexus. This is Asami and Mako. I also have Korra in here. They're engaging in Amplexus, which is basically, um, you know, bow, 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 I can't feel it. You know that song? Okay, they're doing that. I'm trying to keep this family friendly on here. So... They just do that stuff, you know, all the time. Even the boys will do that to each other. Ayo. Anyways, so yeah, Amplexus. That's what it is. Here's one of the bigger ones. So the big ones are... Okay, bye. The big ones are Zuko and Suki. And the small little gray ones that are still growing are Aang, Katara, Toph, and Sokka. And yes, I can tell them apart, but only when I can compare them with each other. Um, the green ones I can tell apart very easily because I've had many years of experience to tell them apart. So, I'm going to let them chill for a bit, and then maybe I'll put some feeding clips in. Ooh! <laughs> Let's stay inside the tank now, okay? I think... Hey! <laughs> Just tried to eat my rubber band. <laughs> I was going to say I think which one that is, but mm, nope. Jumped away too fast. So, anyways, that's it. I'm going to let them chill. Hello, little... The last plant actually arrived today, so I was able to put it up there. So while I was in Tennessee on vacation, which was actually a really nice time, by the way, I could not stop thinking about how I didn't like the wood in the land section of the polydarium. So I was like, okay, I'm going to buy some more driftwood. And so I ordered it while I was on my way down there so that it would be there for when I got home. So I replaced the wood. There was like a little piece of wood and then like an arched piece of wood back there. I replaced it both. So I'll take you in for a closer look doodly -doo, doodly oops and so here's one piece of wood this is the one that i got um from josh's frogs it is advertised to be the same type of wood as this and then this oh there's a frog there <laughs> hello little so then this piece of wood i put back there it's kind of hidden by this philodendron which is okay um but it has a little bit more arch to it so i put it there as like a little bit of a hide um i'm still not completely in love with the land section but it is what it is. I'm tired of buying driftwood. And then this driftwood remains the same. This is that piece that has like the long arm. So it's just, it's just, whoop. so it's like a little land bridge or a little bridge to the land section and into the water section. This piece is pretty much in the same place. I just tilted it a little bit. Um, and then these two are the same as well. And then I still need to get more Anubias plants. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. It is nearly complete. Fireblade toads get so dark when there's tannins in the water. Oh, oh, hang tight, hang tight. Oh, here, okay. They get so dark. Like, in the other enclosure, they were so bright green. And then, similarly, when I had them in their enclosure previously, before their last polydarium build, they were just dark like this when they had um, a lot of, like, manzanita and when they had a lot of, like, tannins in the water from the um, substrate and stuff. So, it's just really interesting. Oh, you want to come up here now, do you? Hey! don't eat your sibling oh don't eat your sibling so rude come back little one little one hey uh-oh goodbye but yeah so <laughs> expect tannins tannins are fine people are always like oh no the water is yellow well, it's okay it's not dirty it's tan uh-oh I have encouraged some bad behavior here. And this frog is still back here. Don't worry, they can get out. I've seen them get out, so it's not like it's too low or anything. It's just to prevent them from kicking substrate into the water section as much as possible. So pretty. Y'all are so pretty. Scoop. So pretty. Due to a mishap on Amazon's part, like they lost my package of driftwood that I had to order another. Well, it just kind of suddenly arrived. And so now there's extra driftwood in here. We've got a piece going up here. We've got this piece here. We've got that piece there. This piece is over there. These two are in the same spot they were. Um, these two are in the same spot since the last clip. 
this piece is new and I put that up here and then I put another piece down there. It might look cluttered, but I think that this is like really enriching. I love that there are so many different levels of them to get out of the water. Like they can literally climb up here or they can just perch like this one's doing right here. You know, there's like tons of opportunity. They can just sit up here to get out of the water. They can climb on this, they can climb on this, they can climb on this. And then they can also climb up into the background, which is something they like to do anyway. So yeah, it may look cluttered to you, but I like it. And so this is how it's going. This is the whole thing. It's really pretty. Also, I completely forgot to mention that I added leaf litter to this area. So there's that. We have plants in the water section. So we have multiple different varieties of Anubias. There's one back here. Hello, frog. There's one here. There's one there. There's one there. There's a little one there. One here. One there. So that's it. It's done. We let the plants grow in. We let the frogs have a good time. And that's it. It's completely done my firebelly toad polydarium thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed my first ever enclosure build i will be putting more out as long as this one doesn't end up hurting my feelings let me know what else you'd like to see let me know if you have any questions comments or concerns please subscribe hit the notification bell all the good stuff and i will see you guys in the next one say goodbye to everyone love bug oh it's a good boy it's his tail's wagging it's a good boy oh yes so good Okay, say goodbye to everyone. Farewell. Look at this little gray chin. Ugh, you're not even that old. Stop. So beautiful. You so pretty. You so pret. You so pret. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, goodbye.